Good evening, everybody. How are y'all doing today? Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, this is going to be our first time here at uh, what we're calling Hope Talks, applying God's Word to everyday life. We've been uh, pondering about doing something like this for a while. Um, something that the Lord's kind of been dealing with me about is, you know, we come to church on Sunday and we, we, we hear God's Word uh, but I've been a, been a lot about application. How do we apply it? How do we how do, how's it look in real life? And so hopefully we'll be doing some more of these sessions and doing different things. And uh, so today uh, we are uh, having a conversation about revival and outreach. And we have uh, evangelist brother Josh Gray with us, and of course outreach minister here at Wings of Healing, Sunday school teacher brother Scott Green. So. Uh, we're going to dive right into it. We're not going to be uh, real long before you, and uh, but we hope you're joining us. If not, maybe you're watching this later on, but if you're watching live, we appreciate you. You can share this video or link or something on Facebook or on social media. Uh, revival. You know, when we talk about revival, we hear that word a lot, and actually revival is not in the Bible, and uh, I looked up, it's not, not in there, but we, we know revival is a, is a renewed zeal. It's renewing. It's a a uh, renewed direction, a new pursuit for the things of God. And uh, so a lot of times, you know, we'll talk, you know, uh, we need revival, we want revival, we'll pray for revival. And the reason why that is is because uh, I believe that we do need revival. I believe as a church, not only this church, but as the church, uh, we need to get a redirection, a refocus on on the things of God. You know, revival is, you know, many things and and we've heard different ministers come and preach i'll never forget something brother uh, jr holsinger preached been years and years ago now and he talked about revival and he gave a a meaning of revival that stuck with me and he said it's a renewed zeal to do the work of the lord and uh, and truly there's times in my life where i've, I've got to pray that god renew my zeal to do the work of god you know renew my zeal you know, and uh, so, you know, we talk about revival. Sometimes we think, what's well, a, a, week, a weekend of services or a week of services or a series of services. But, but, you know, really revival is a coming back to the things of God. It's a coming back to the things of God. And uh, revival is essentially for the church. You know, uh, really it's for the, the, the saved. It's for the people in the church. It's a, you know, you, you can't really bring something back to life that's not been alive. So, uh, so revival is for the church. It's a call back to prayer, biblical principles, and certainly we're living in a day and hour now where, where we're seeing uh, so much stuff kind of slide away from, from the biblical principles of God, and, and we might get into that. And often revival is a recommitment to God. I, I just want to say before I, I get these, turn these guys loose here, but um, I know for us here at Wings of Healing, uh, about a year, year and a half ago, uh, God, really, God really put something not only on, on, on my heart, but it seemed like it just fell upon the church about prayer. And when we really begin to refocus our attention to prayer, yeah, sure, we always prayed. We always took prayer requests. We always started our service off with prayer. But uh, I, I think, you know, prayer can be this thing that we just, it, we just do. But when, when we truly begin to refocus prayer in everything we do, I remember about a year ago we had a meeting and, and, and I said, you know, I don't want anything done here without it first starting with prayer. I don't want a class taught. I don't want outreach done. I don't, I don't want anything done without prayer because, you know, prayer is the, I think, the single most important thing that we can do. It's the single most important conversation you're going to have every day is your, when you're talking to God. And so with us, as soon as we begin to put prayer back in the forefront and to perspective, I, I can say with a shorty, and I know Brother Scott's here and he can, will agree with me here, that as soon as we did that, immediately we seen the presence of God and the power of God fall in our services. Right. Immediately. Immediately. And, and, and you remember, you know, we started our... Uh, uh, 24 hour prayer we do it one one day a month and then we start our, back our prayer meetings and 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 things like that and and it, it was immediately I mean it was uh, you know we uh, some of the the most powerful services I've ever been in I'm 30 just turned 39 and been around the church you know most of my life all my life and 
we, I have had some of the most power, been part of some of the most powerful services in the past six months, past eight months that, that I've ever been in. And, and I'm talking about on Tuesday night or on a Sunday school or, you know, just, just it, it's just any time the, the power of God could fall in a, in a special way. And, and uh, I mean, have you noticed that, Brother Scott, with the well, with services? Uh, absolutely. With every service that we have, whether, whether I'm, I'm teaching or I'm preaching or I'm just leading a service, before I get up on, uh, on the platform, you know, I spend time in prayer. Yes. I never want to serve God with unrepented sin uh, on my, you know, on my being. I, sure. I don't want to ever want to do that. Sure. I want to be as, you know, as fit for God as I possibly can. And everything that I do when I'm studying at home for a sermon, for a lesson, I, I, I start that with prayer. And I always find out that if I don't start with prayer, my lessons, my studying uh, is more complicated, I right. might say. Sure, sure. It's harder to get into it. It's harder to find what God wants me to do. If, you, if you're letting God lead you, how are you going to let God lead you if you don't first have a discussion with him Amen. to find out what it is he wants you to do? Amen. Because if there, I mean, anybody can can write a sermon or, 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 and stand up and speak. But is that what really God wants for the people? That's right. Is that what he wants for his church? And you have to find that out. And the only way you're going to do that is to have that conversation with him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and that, that's important because, you know, something the Lord really spoke to me a few years ago, you know, and we were struggling and, and worried about things, worried about the church and, and you know, thinking, how, how are we going to do this? How am I going to take care of this? How am I going to do this? And it got to be a lot of I, I, I. And finally, you know, I had to realize that this is the Lord's house. You know, this is the Lord's house. Sure, you know, we're in a position, various ones here in various positions at their churches and things, but really it's God's work. And, and it, it's God's people. It's God's work, you know. Uh, we're the sheep of his pasture, and this is God's church. And, and, and so when, when we really started doing that, we, we've seen a big change. Now, now you know, it's been, it's been a process, and it's, it's, uh, when we've done that, also the enemy has, has fought as well. You know, but, but that's just part of that spiritual, spiritual warfare. And prayer, again, is, is, is a weapon, uh, probably the most important weapon, I think, that we have. And Brother Josh uh, from New Life Family Worship Center is with us. He evangelizes, just got out of a revival in uh, Newark, Ohio, and preached in New Boston last night. And uh, brother, what what would you have to say about prayer? I mean, yeah, you go around a lot of different places, but you know, you, you see that happening in a lot of churches. Oh yes, a uh, lot of churches I, I attend and preach at. I notice uh, if they don't have a weekly prayer meeting, they have a monthly prayer right, meeting. Right, right. Um, like you guys, you can't do it without prayer. Right, right. Um, a church that doesn't pray ain't going to prosper. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's the one thing I notice. Any church that's prospering and in revival and changing is praying amen all right and they'll have in prayer and corporate prayer and not just one person praying right but corporate prayer yeah 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 and, and it seems like to me there uh there's a hunger i think for people to to talk to god now now you know i'm gonna be honest with you and like most churches you know uh attendance at prayer meetings are are not as not as uh, uh, big or big as they are during revivals and things to that nature, and sometimes schedules and things. But but you know we tell people all the time, you know, if you can't be here at prayer meeting, you know, pray at home. You know, seek the Lord at home. Have have prayer time at home. And and and, and I think if we will do those things, you know, if if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, you know, and 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 so sometimes we're looking for this this kind of microwave popcorn type revival, you know. But really, there's there's no substitution for prayer. There's no there's no substitution for prayer, and and you know we can we can do a lot of things, and and you know there's three of us right here, and we can bring, you know, a hundred other ministers that we know, you know, to to talk about this, and and all three of us have different types of ministries, and and preach different ways, and probably study different ways, and and learn different ways, and absorb different ways. But at the same time, I, I think. Uh, I think prayer is at the forefront of, of, of what of what we're doing, uh, brother Josh. You just you mentioned something, and, and you might have already answered it. Uh, but if you have anything else to add, uh, as you're 
traveling around different places and kind of seeing different churches and different uh, being with different pastors, you know, is there a common thread among churches that are experiencing revival and, and moves of God? Yes, besides, of course, prayer, sure. but also fellowship. Okay, yeah. And that's one thing, even when I come into a church, I come under great revival. And, and, I, and I've seen revival throughout, you know, 18 years of, of being in the church. Uh, normally when revival comes, there's also a deep fellowship between the church members. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that's biblical. Yes. They yes. broke bread, the Bible says, right. in Acts. It's, yeah. And um, they went and they went to each other's houses and broke bread house and, house. and continued yeah. breaking bread. Right. And um, there was something about fellowship. Now you there was a there was a thin line between being coming a social club. Right. Um, and just having unity. Yeah. But what of course I'm talking about is there was a unity. Right. Right. And a lot of churches I've noticed they they do stuff together. Yeah. You know whenever I visit churches they have a calendar. I look at it because yeah, yeah. I like to see what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, sure. And I notice there's always potlucks for the torch people. Right. There's, uh, there's gatherings, there's Bible studies, there's small groups, there's right. things that they're doing to get to know each other. If it's just among their torch or within a community, community of torches, yeah. I've seen it both ways. But I notice it's, it's fellowship. Yeah, yeah. That's very important. Yeah, and you, you see that in the book of Acts, like you said, you know, they went from house to house, breaking bread, having fellowship, and, and the church grew. And, 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 and I know for us, it, it's, uh, uh, it's something very important for us as far as our, our people. It just seems like there's just a, um, I don't know, there's such a family tie. Even when people just come in, you know, it ain't long most of the time. They, they're just, just like part of the family, and, and, uh, and, and that's, that's great. And now... We're, we're going to kind of begin the transition, but I want to I want to speak about and like I say we have um, as evangelists and, and teacher and, and outreach uh, minister brother Scott um, and pastor and different different there's different types of ministry out there and different types of leaders you know Sunday school teachers and song leaders and prayer warriors and you know just just you know small group teachers just just uh, things that you people you see up you know, out in the open. Then there's other types of leaders. I think, I think a lot of, I think everybody's a leader to somebody. You know, I think everybody, there's always somebody connected, you know, to, I, I through the years I've, I've always seen, I, I've always watched, you know, children, small children. And, and a lot of times, whether it's their mother or father or, or, or even just someone in the church, I, I, you know, a lot of times you'll see them imitate the way they worship, the way the adult is worshiping. And then a lot of times they'll, their eyes will be open if their hands are up, they're looking over because if, if they're doing that, that's what they're going to do. And, and so that's a type of leadership as well. And, and in the scriptures, you know, it talks about the older ladies and the older men teaching the younger men and, and the younger ladies of, of modesty and, and all these things and, and that, that we're supposed to be learning. Uh, but when we talk about church leaders and, and people in, in the general in the church, you know, how important is it for leaders, for people in the church to have the attitude of revival? You know, because I, I've always said here that, and, and I say here, if you don't know, we're in actually in the back of our sanctuary is where we're at here at the Wings of Healing. But I've always said, you know, here at this church that, you know, it's, it's really not good enough for me or, or the preachers to have to have a vision of revival, you know, I, you know, everybody's got to have that. Everybody's got to have that for their families, and you know, we've got to have that for our coworkers, wherever, wherever the harvest field that God has us in. And so, you know, just few, few, few seconds here, if both of you want to want to address this, how how important is it for leaders, not just pastors, but leaders of all kind of ministries, to have an attitude of growth and revival? first of all to say that we we need a revival gives us the assumption that there's a falling out and and that's true there is what, what tends to happen is you know things uh, become commonplace and we just kind of start to get stale and we need to refresh ourselves sure. and that's just as important for leadership as it is for for the saints that are sitting in the pews and uh, even more so, because first of all, they are the leaders. 
And to say a leader doesn't need to have a refreshing or revival, um, many leaders, you know, have fallen and gone the wrong way. Sure. And when they have fallen, they've fallen clear out of the church. So we need to have revival, first of all, starts within us. Right. Individual. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's for the church, but it right. starts within us. Within and us. and we have to go to ourselves and re recognize, listen, it's been a long time since I've refreshed myself, since right. I, I, I boosted myself. I need that little taste of honey to, yeah. to boost me up a little bit. Right. And the only way we're going to get that is through revival. I mean, that's one of the best tools sure. that we have is, sure. is the revival services that we have. And what that does is give us, us a unity all together. But we all have to come together also individually with our heart wanting that refreshing. To get that, that, that refreshing of the Spirit of God that we once had before. That's what we... Everybody wants that. We, sure. when, when you first become a Christian, the reason you, you became a Christian was because, bam, you got something. Yeah. You got something. Right, and right. it moved you. It moved you to the quick. And after a while, you become commonplace with things, and things just kind of get a little stale. Sure, sure. So we, we have to deal with that, and it's within us that we have to deal with it. Right. Right. We have to stir the spirit within us. Amen. Brother Josh, how about you? Lead, leaders in church, how, how important for all of us to have this attitude of growth and revival? Oh, definitely. I mean, leaders can see things like everyone else can see just because sure. of the position you're in. Sure. And, um, and you should want revival, of course, for yourself, but also for those that are maybe dragging down and their sure. file going down. Sure. And, and um, you know, if my past or sees a need for a type, you know, if he sees something dying down, right. then I need to get back behind him too. Because right. fire comes again, it makes a bigger fire. That's right. That's right. And so it takes that from the lead step. Because again, lead will see things yeah. that maybe not everyone else does. It's not because we're well, special, but in a way, there was this, an extra knowledge there sure. maybe. Or, sure. or something we just see or hear or whatever it is. Sure. I, and I'm ta not talking negative way. Right. But those times we can see the torch going down the wrong path. Sure, right. sure. And if the leadership doesn't bring it back. Right, right. You know, the setboards and the leaders have to lead. Right. They can't walk right. behind and expect to guide people. Yeah. So if we don't help push that revival, right. then right. it may not happen. That's, that's true. That's true. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, before we even started this uh, video, we, we, we had a little discussion. Of course, we didn't obviously go through all of it, but... One of the things that, that uh, you know, we've kind of gotten into that seems to kind of be something that we've been taught is fellowship and connection and unity, how important unity is, you know, in the church as a whole, within local churches as they are whole, and also churches together. And, and I know we're all part of a, a, a fellowship uh, as well of, of, of body of believers and from various places. And I think, you know, whether you are or not, that's, that's really not an issue. I think that we still need to have fellowship with, with one another, with other believers and with other churches. And, and, um, and also to have that back one another up in prayer. You know, uh, we, we, we got to go be with Brother Josh and Sister Brittany uh, over the weekend. But, you know, when we wasn't there, we were praying for them when we knew they were in service and, and, and different things. And, and it's just, just important to do those kinds of things because, you know, we're really, we're all in this together. You know, it's not a, it's not a competition. You know, it, it's not we're trying to do better than this church or that church. It, it, it's, it's all about the kingdom. And, and when it becomes more about the kingdom than, than our house, I think then that's really, it sets up where God can really, really do a great thing. And we're seeing God do wonderful things in, in our in our community, and and in our in our church, and you know uh, God truly is moving. I mean, it, it, it's it's special. I think what God's doing, and and I I am really uh, I'm really excited about what God is doing. I'm looking forward to what God has in store, you know, uh, for this church and for for God's people and and for the other churches and. And uh, it seems like everywhere I go, there's just this, this uh, excitement. There's this zeal. There's, 
You know, people are just expecting. I think they're hungry for, for something. Now, we talk about revival for the church. I, then, you know, we've got to go out. You know, we, we can't just expect God to just, you know, we're in there praying for revival, praying for souls, and, and God to just send them in without us going out. That's not scriptural, really. You know, uh, he, 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 the, he tells us to go out to the highways and byways, compel them to come in. He said the fields are white, all ready to harvest. They're actually a pastime, really, for harvest. The, the white fields mean they should have already been taken care of. But, and, um, and he said, Jesus said to pray that uh, there'd be labors in, in the vineyard. So we're, that's what we're praying for. So now we want to kind of shift outreach. And that's something that, that I know uh, Brother Josh and his, his church has been involved in many different things for years. And, and, and we have too. Before we ever even had a building to worship in, we were meeting in a community building. We were, we, we were having outreach services in the nursing homes and working in the homeless shelters and, and different, different things like that. And we've tried to keep up with those kinds of things but you know outreach to me I, if we're not careful it can be trendy and and uh just like a lot of things in church i i can i speak of this often i can remember where where it was a trend for churches to have schools so every church had a school and and the problem with trends are trends come and fade they come and go and and uh, and so you had a, a lot of that kind of fell by the wayside and then a lot of churches had daycare. A lot of churches had, you know, food pantries, and, and all those things are good. And 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 I think we need more of those kinds of things in, in certain areas where those things are needed. Um, but we got to be careful that we don't follow trends. We follow God. And and so when we talk about outreach, uh, we see more and more people getting involved. There's more and more churches. I can remember going over years ago scheduling things at our local park and. You could pretty much have you could pretty much have service anytime you wanted because there wasn't hardly anybody doing doing things like that. Now you know uh, a lot of people are doing things, and it's a great thing. It's a good thing that that more churches are getting involved. Uh, I know we've actually connected with a couple of groups last year and and worked some with them, and I think that's important too to work together because you know uh, I know for us you know we're we're limited in what we can do, but if we can do a little bit and this one can do a little bit. It, it seems that we can accomplish more. But uh, I tell you, I think last year uh, we, we really had some significant things take place uh, in outreach services. More so, I mean, we've always had good ones, and we've seemed like God's always blessed with good turnouts and things like that. But uh, last year, a couple, and, and even the year before last, there, were, there was really some some things that took place last year and, and one of the one of the things I know that that we've kind of focused and re, refocused what we do is not only are we looking at the physical needs of of the community but along with that we're also addressing spiritual needs because one of the things that that I've that I've learned and, and we we were doing this every year every year every year and and a couple years ago you know, we got to know the same people because they were always there in the same need every time we would go. It was the same. I mean, it was, and, and, and we loved them, and, and, and we still love them. And, 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 and we did get to know them. We still know them, you know. But I was like, you know, it's just like we're really not accomplishing anything if this is just a process. Over and over, this is the same people in the same need every time. You know, what can we do to really help? And... Um, and so we really begin to pray about how to change what we do when we're there. And so we started to, uh, to we, we got better or organized, yes. and, and we got better organized. I'm just being honest, we got better organized. We begin to set things up. We begin to put people in position, and, and we begin to set up stations and have different things. And I, I'd like for Brother Scott to, to talk about this a little bit because... Uh, for just a few minutes here and, and just kind of address, you know, uh, but we really had some significant prayer services over at the park. I mean, very, very significant where the Holy Ghost was, was right there and Brother Josh was with us at most of those services. And uh, very, very significant and, and to the point to where lives are still being changed even after the fact. And, and, and we're here and even, even now here and getting text messages reports of people who have, 
who, who used to be here in different drug programs and different things. Now they've went back home, but we're still in contact with them. And God's still, you know, the work ain't done yet, but, but they're still trodden along in, in the right direction. So talk about some of those things, brother. Well, first of all, <clears throat> first of all, a, a person in need, their first need is the need at the moment. Sure. Uh, they don't, don't necessarily look at the long-term need. What is it going to take to get me through today? What is it going to take me to get, you know, what is it going to take for me to get through this hour? What, what's that going to take? That's what they right. recognize. So the important thing is, number one, the biggest thing I think that we did in our outreach at the parks is where we set up our ministry tables. First of all, we got organized. That was right. the most important sure thing. Because well, one time we went out and everything was just kind of haphazard. We, and it was good. Sure. But we learned from that one that we need organization. We need uh, people assigned to particular uh, ministries, uh, whatever that needs to be done, whether it's f food service or uh, uh, taking names for drawings or handing out clothing, whatever it is, there needs to be people assigned to that, right. specifically for that. Right. The other thing is we set up ministry tables, two tables with ministers, um, no, I think we just had the one table, but we had two ministers and uh, at one table and, and interacting with people, right? Coming and picking up uh, uh, tracks on information for spiritual needs, right? And with interacting with them and talking to them and praying with them, I think we were more able to understand them personally, right? and get to know them and know their personal needs, maybe even something they don't know about themselves. Right. Or maybe they already know the need but don't know how to address it. We can help them address that. Amen. Uh, we can help them uh, recognize that maybe, you know, today uh, a meal is good, a uh, warm cu a hot cup of coffee and maybe a new pair, a new coat or a pair of gloves or whatever. That'll help them today. Yeah. But what can we do to help you get through right. through the long term? Right. Right. You know, spiritually, what is it we can do for you? And when you recognize some of the problems that the people have, whether it's uh, homeless or whether they're on drugs or whether they're in halfway houses or whatever it is, if you can specify those, those things that are maybe causing the need, uh, you can help them get through that right that time that they're having yeah but in, in a spiritual way yeah and I, I to me I think that's one of the biggest things that we've done is put more ministers out there to help and right. talk to people right and hand out the information and, and, and brother gray here brother Josh has been involved in our services his 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 services at, at their church and also other churches that friends of ours that have services over there how important is it to get to know the people you minister to? Oh, absolutely, yeah. very important. Yeah, um, you got to get to know people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean Jesus done it. Yeah, we got to do sure, it. Sure, sure. You know Jesus didn't just go up to people. He knew them. He said, Zacchaeus, yeah. I'm coming to your house today. Yeah, yeah. He got to know people. Right, right. And the more I get to know people, if it's someone not in church or if it's a church people, I get to know their needs. Um, it helps me better minister right. with them and to them. I mean, yeah, God will reveal things to you sometimes. Sure. Sometimes God wants you to talk to people That's it. and That's get it. to know people. God's not always just going to lay everything in your lap. Right, right. He wants you to, to work for it sometimes. He wants it because you have to build the relationship. Right. And um, it's just like with any of the choices, if I don't have a good relationship with them, how can I be effective there? Right. You know, if they don't like me or don't get along with them, yeah. How can it be effective? And the same thing with um, anybody in this ward. If we come at them to combat and debate with them over biblical truths, right. how are we going to help them? You've got to right. build a relationship. Right. You know, you can teach them doctrine and all that later when you have a good relationship. It's easier to talk. Me and Brother Chuck, we can get 
honest with each other. Sure. He can say things to me that a stranger couldn't say to me. Right. Right. But we'll go out to someone we don't know very well and speak plain to them right. when we can't. So you gotta build that relationship before you can ever help anybody. Cause some people you gotta get plain with, sure. but you can't do that if you don't have that relationship. Right, right. Yeah, and definitely you see that even with the apostles, with the apostle Paul. You know, I always say, you know, here he wrote over two thirds of, of the New Testament. I mean, to me, one of the greatest men, you know, besides Jesus, to, to ever live as far as in in the, uh, in, in, in the church. Uh, but yet we see that with him as well. He would get to know people. He would, to the point to where, you know, he had people's uh, houses he would stay in as, and he traveled and, and, and he would get to know in a community before he would go in and preach. A lot of times he would go and establish relationships and then he would begin to teach and, 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 and preach them. And I, I think that that's something that, that also I, I see kind of a shift within within the church as a whole is that that uh, that we're doing better at that I mean honestly and, and we're doing we're doing we're doing uh, much better at that um, you know we talked about physical and we talked about spiritual and I know I know for me uh, one it, it's it's kind of at times it's overwhelming because um, we want to help everybody you know we, we really do and 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 I know, you know, one of the things that I really enjoyed about, you know, we had Hope in the Park last year. And, uh, and, and of course, I'm uh, up there a lot of times with the microphone and things like that, so I don't get to, uh, to mingle a lot with people a lot of times, but I did make some time last year, and I said, you know, I want to take some time. I want to talk to people. I want to meet people. I want to, you know, and... and and, uh, but what I noticed was not only the people that we were there ministering to, but, but what I really, what really affect, what really touched me was that when I seen the people in our church and how that they just shined. I mean, I mean, some of them, I, we, we got people in our, in, in the church that just, you know, like Brother Scott said, we, we put people in, in places because certain people have certain strengths, you know, that, that they're just able to, uh, you know, anyone can hand out a hot dog. But some people have, they've got a, a, an anointing about that. Yeah. You know, that sounds weird, but, but I'm going to tell you, there's some people just have, they're just, they, they're, the love of God just, just comes out of them, yeah. you know, in, in that situation. And, and, and I think it would do good a lot of times, you know, for, you know, a lot of times, you know, you know ministers and young ministers, you know, uh, want to preach. But, you know, a lot of times I think, you know, we need to learn how to minister to people, how, how, to, how to really minister to people one-on-one. -on -one. Because really, you know, yeah, preaching is, is, is great and it, it's biblical and, and it, touches, uh, it touches people and it has its place. But that's really not where, where uh, a lot of your ministering is going to take place. Right, right. You know, your ministering is going to take place. You know, I've, I've said, that, said this all the time. Ministering is going to take place in a, in a hospital room where there ain't a crowd. There's just one person in, in a bed, you know, and, and nobody's there seeing what you're doing. That's right. But that's ministry. You know, ministry is going to take place in a, in a basement in a nursing home where there's five or six, seven or eight, you know, people in there. And we're, we're, that's, that's really where ministry is or it's at a park where it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I think that one of the things that, that, I've, that I've seen with people in, in our church is just when they, they've really got excited about going out. Like they, you know, this is my job. I mean, this, they really took that. You know, even whenever we, we always get donations and do things, and I know our time's getting away from us, but uh, take donations and we give out things. You know, we'll, we'll give out five, six, seven hundred dollars worth of, of stuff. You know, just, just give out and, and just that's been donated to us and, and from local businesses. And we thank God for those, those businesses and things like that. And uh, we'll have more on that this summer when we'll do these things. But, um, you know, even just someone taking names and uh, uh, writing down just, just the kindness that comes out of them. I mean, you know, it, it's not a problem. We want you here. We, want, we hope you win that, you know. And, and, and I think people really felt that. And, yes. and to me, it was just, it was really just, I was inspired by the people in the church. You know, when I, whenever I would, you know, when someone was up there singing or a drama team was up there doing their thing, I'd just kind of watch and look at people and, 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 and if they were handing out clothes or coats or something like that, it was just inspiring to me. I mean, it just really was inspiring. And, um, but real quickly, uh, 
how do we how do we address spiritual needs? Because you know, it, outreach can be trendy, and 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 if we're not careful, you know, we can do these things just to be doing things, but it's not going to have any long term effects on people. And so, what are some things, and what does it look like? And 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 I know we didn't talk about this, so. Uh, just maybe something off the top of your heads, but uh, what are some things we can, how do we stay focused spiritually, but yet we, we've, got to, we've got to address physical issues because there's a lot of physical issues. But how do, we, how do we, without just focusing on that, but we stay focused on spiritual, spiritual needs of people while addressing physical? Do you have anything, brother? Well, I think a lot of it's what we've been talking about, that communication. Right. The whole idea of doing all that is when you or feeding somebody, or you're clothing somebody, or you're visiting somebody that's in need, is you are letting them know someone cares about them. Yeah. Because that's really what everybody wants, is to know they're cared about. And when you open that, and you let them know someone cares about them, then you got to figure out how you get them to know. You don't just care about their physical need, but you care about their spiritual needs. Right, right. You care about... Well, they're going for eternity. You care right. about their soul. Right, right. And But you force do that by, because what they, a lot of people may not even know they need help spiritually. They know they need help physically. Right. They know they're hungry. Yeah. They know they're naked. They know they're poor. That's what they know. Right, right. Now, the moment you take care of that need, maybe for that moment, they'll realize they need something else. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that, and we just gotta find that moment, and not just here you go and walk away. Right, right. Here you go, yeah. walk away. That's the problem. Sometimes we do it too big. Right, right. Too big. Yeah. That's you true. know, That's walk true. a little group. Yeah. And that way, it's small little scale. You get too overwhelmed, you ain't helping nobody. That's true. That's you get true. too big of a multitude, you're not helping. Nobody. That's true. So That's you gotta true. go on how to yeah. get your moments. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a good point, and and I think that the, we. We've seen that, and I know last year uh, when we had our Hope in the Park, we had prayer line, and uh, it it changed my life. I mean, I, I'll just be it. It really changed my life in that I, I think that you know we we always I always knew there were needs, and I, and I always knew that that you know yeah I always recognized that. But I, I think maybe for me last year it just really it really stuck to me that that a lot of people just don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, I've been you know raised in church, so I've been in Sunday school, and you know I've I failed and I faltered, but that was my own fault. I always knew what what was right and what was wrong. But I think last year I, I recognized that. There were people that really didn't know. They really didn't know what what their next step was. They really didn't know. Absolutely. They really didn't know. They yeah they they've been to church or they, they you know uh, but they really just didn't know. And, and to me it really moved. And we got to meet some some great wonderful people uh, through uh, through a group uh, in Portsmouth. And and many of them were coming uh, got to come to our church. We got to baptize uh, some of them and and really minister to them. And they and honestly. They ministered to us. We learned from them, and, and it was really life-changing for me. So, uh, Brother Scott, uh, just to, maybe a minute here. What, what, do you, what can you say as far as, you know, how do we keep it spirit? How do we spiritually? Well, uh, and we've addressed a lot of things, and I think the most important thing is, number one, you do have to uh, uh, address the physical needs because that crosses over into the spiritual. Sure, world. sure it does. Jesus did that. Sure he did. I mean, he fed the multitude, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, if if we take care, he fed the multitude and, and he grasped their spiritual needs. So, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, that that, that you have to fix all of their physical needs. You, obviously, that's that can be impossible. But um, if you can address something, that they're dealing with at that moment, and Brother Josh said that, and then you can at least get that off of their mind. Yes, yes. And then get into that, and then get into that spiritual, uh, help them get into that spiritual attitude. 
I think that's really, that's the most important thing. If we can just become as Jesus was and, and deal with people one-to-one -one and deal, and he did that. He healed them. He dealt with their physical needs as well as their spiritual needs. If a person doesn't have to worry so much about what the physical need is at the moment, they're better listeners, right. better able to hear the word of God, yes. better able to uh, uh, recognize their own spiritual need. Yeah. If they've got to worry about things, that's pulling them away from that spiritual, right. spiritual attitude yeah. that we, you know, yeah. if, if, if I've got a toothache in church, I'm obviously not going to get right. what I need. Right. But if I address that physical need, right somehow whether it's just take an aspirin or whatever then i can get myself into a position where i can receive the word of god and i think that's the idea we just yes. need to help address some of those physical needs amen amen well i tell you i think we had a good uh, conversation we, we hope uh, you enjoyed watching us here today and uh, uh we want to uh, just we're going to pray here in just a moment and uh, we want to pray for uh, all of those, I know we have some uh, followers from you know other churches, other leaders want to say how, how we greet you and greet all the churches that might be watching this. And, and uh, we don't, uh, I know I personally don't claim to be an expert on, on, on any, any of this necessarily. We're learning as we're going. Yeah, and, uh, but, but, you know, if we can help you in any way, and in, in any way, you know, in, in your church or your community, you know, if we can, we'd, we'd love to do that. And, and anything we can do, we'd love to be involved. We'd love to pray for you, uh, uh, for the people in, in this community, you know, uh, in Portsmouth area. We, we uh, hopefully, uh, we're going to be out there. We're going to be out as soon as the weather breaks. We're going to get back out there. Uh, we're just praying. We're always praying for little things like this. You know, what can we do? This is something that we've kind of talked about. And, and I said, I don't know how we're going to do this. You know, sort of like a little talk show. You know, we don't, we're not no Dr. Phil or nothing here, but uh, I'm starting to get ahead like him, but uh, not quite there yet. But, but uh, we hope you had a good time. And, and uh, we want to pray that God would give us direction. Yes. Not just us, but give, the, give God's people direction. I, I really believe that there's a lot of good people, a lot of good people, and uh, we we uh, we we get to we get to travel uh, off and on and and go see a lot of people, and there's just a lot of great people. God's got a lot. Of, God's got a good church. He's got a good good church, and uh, and I know we've we've seen people come into to our church and and new families, and it's just 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 uh, it's encouraging and it's great. And, uh, and, and, you know, we miss, uh, there's some in our community with backsliders, too. We want to pray for our backsliders. And maybe, maybe there's some that used to go to church, uh, very, any, whatever church, you know, where to preach the truth. You know, uh, we, we pray that you, uh, you know, you go back. We go back. And uh, yes. so we want, to, we want to pray. We want to pray. And I want to ask Brother Gray, if he would, Brother Josh Gray, if he would lead us. And just pray that, you know, that we can continue this revival. That, that you know, it's God's revival, you know. But... But I, I, I believe, I, I'm excited. I mean, I really am excited about what God's doing uh, at this church. And everywhere I go, there's just an excitement in the air. And, and, and we're excited. We're excited. We're looking forward. Amen. You know, we're, we're trying to improve things around here. And I know a lot of the churches are working on things. And I've been talking to other pastors. Just got, got done uh, going to Louisiana for, with a group of uh, six or seven pastors and leaders. And and uh, we had a great time and uh, a lot of good fellowship and it was encouraging and was in a, in a group of uh, people, uh, about 3,000 ministers and wives and leaders and, and uh, just, just a great time and, and I left really encouraged. So I'm excited about what God is doing. So, so we pray you enjoyed this. We're gonna, I don't want to say when we're going to do the next one until we get, get a system going. Uh, but we're, we're definitely going to be doing this again, and we're probably going to be addressing our, our upcoming ladies' conference. I'll see if I can get my wife to, to uh, she's probably watching this, maybe. She may be watching it, uh, but she'll probably be with us uh, next, next time and talking about uh, ladies' conference coming up at the end of April here at Wings of Healing and, uh, and talk about different things. So, so we appreciate you. Brother, Brother Josh, why don't you uh, take us out in, in prayer here today and pray for those that might be uh, watching us today, whatever, whatever's on your heart. 
Lord, Heavenly Father, we Lord thank Jesus, you, Lord, for the knowledge you have today. given us thank to be able you, to say God. what we said today. And thank Lord, anyone power, watching, we pray Lord that God. your war doesn't Lord, return word, void. Lord and we pray God, it touches them and blesses them. Today, Lord God. We pray that all pray choices leaders, Lord God, have revival. And all choices have successful outreaches and growth. Lord God, regional in our nation, Lord God, we pray, Lord, for all the pastors and leaders, Lord God, and evangelists and teachers, Lord God, we pray. Father God, for missionaries, Lord God, in foreign lands and here and abroad, Lord God, we pray you would uh, just encourage them, speak to them, Lord God. Lord God, touch our communities, Lord God, that are, Lord God, just uh, affected by this drug epidemic and Lord, all these ish, many, many issues, Lord God, we pray for healing, Lord God, in people's lives, Lord, spiritually, emotionally, physically, Lord God. We know you're a healer of all disease, Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, that you would have your way, Lord God, with all your people, Lord God. Lord, we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you today. We want to thank Brother Josh for being with us. Brother Scott, of course, he'll be with us anyways. And so thank Brother Josh for coming. And, and uh, I said this is our first one, so he's got to be on the first one. And uh, Pastor Chuck Holsinger, we're thankful to have that be able to do this. Hope you enjoyed it today. Have a good evening. We'll talk to you soon.